Hello, this is Dr. Kim Doramo from the American Institute of Mind Body Medicine, and this is Mind Body TV Live. Welcome to this episode. It is Valentine's Day, so happy Valentine's Day. And today I'm going to share about how your heart heals everything how your heart heals your body, how your heart heals your relationships, how your heart affects everyone around you. And yes, how your heart and the electromagnetic messages from your heart can heal the world, can heal everyone and everything around you. Pretty fascinating stuff. And um, there's a lot I'm going to share specifically from the Institute of Heart Math. They've done like 25 years of really intensive research looking at how our heart affects everything within our body, beyond our body, and scientifically how that can be quantified, how we can measure that and how we can affect that and harmonize that. I'm going to bring you today in this episode some tools that can allow your heart to come into this harmony called coherence, this state that begins to heal everything, that begins to heal what's happening physically in your body, no matter what level you might be struggling on. So if you're experiencing any ailments in your physical health, short-term, long-term, you know, autoimmune illness, chronic pain, chronic fatigue, or, you know, syndromes that don't even have a name and you're like, this is just a conundrum, but living in that space of struggle this is something that will revolutionize your life. So um, a little bit about myself, for those of you who are just tuning in, I am an osteopathic physician. I've been practicing emergency medicine. That's my bird certification for many, many years um, before really converting my practice over to um, one that's more centered on healing rather than treating illness. It's more about um, assisting and supporting healing. So I have left the emergency room and moved into an online practice to share what I know and what I've learned personally and professionally about healing, about what allows us to heal. And after applying this myself for my own personal reasons, um, physical illness, emotional illness, all kinds of really um, significant discord, this is um, what I found to be the most powerful thing that has assisted me and that has assisted um, those that I've worked with, my patients, my clients, in coming into really incredible um, healing from virtually every illness that we could possibly come up with um, to allow them to live in harmony, to allow them to have quote unquote miraculous changes in their body and in their life. So anything from overweight to like, you know, releasing that and, and allowing yourself to live in lightness to um, severe autoimmune illness, fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue syndrome, digestive problems, food allergies, uh, migraines, you know, you name it. I am also a yogi, and that's why we've collaborated with the Monday Monday Network to share this on the Addicted to Yoga fan page. So welcome to all of you yogis. I always love, Colors, love, love food um, connecting people who are practicing yoga because it just ties into the work I'm doing very, very well. So welcome everyone who is here live. I will be welcoming your comments and I just pulled up the screen so I can look at them as we go. And welcome to everyone who's listening to the recording because I know a lot of my private clients have shared with me, I always listen to you. It's just I listen to the recording because I can't be there at that time. And in the last week, I've got a lot of great comments on the... Um, email we sent out with a YouTube video that I did. It was an EFT tapping segment. Um, it was an EFT tapping script for um, harnessing the power of love, connecting with your heart, allowing this to flourish in your body. Hey, everyone. Um, so I'm psyched everyone liked that so much because I really loved doing it. I love doing tapping sequences. Right now, um, Nick Ortner and Jessica Ortner have the tapping, uh, World Tapping Summit that is starting in, uh, I think, like a week. So I'll be sure to share the link here for that tapping summit. I very, very highly recommend it and um, have used that myself for so many years with really powerful results, both for myself personally and also in the emergency room, people with pain, severe anxiety, all kinds of chronic problems. And now in my mind-body medicine practice, 
Um, but I did do, we emailed this um, segment out and people really loved it and it meant a lot to everyone. So thank you for the feedback on that. Um, you can subscribe at drkimd.com if you'd like to receive the emails that I send out and the videos and things like that. Um, but you can also find that on my YouTube channel, Dr. Kim Duramo. So let's get started on how love heals everything, how love heals your body. And I definitely would like those of you who are here live to communicate with me your thoughts on this, your experience with this, and what are the struggles that you're dealing with that we can apply this to. I'm going to bring you through an exercise during this um, stream so that um, we move into this harmonic state called coherence. So the first thing that is really the foundation we need to understand that goes so far beyond what we're still doing in conventional medicine today or the way we think of things is that we are primarily, first and foremost, energetic. Yes, physical. Yes, emotional. But the underlying premise for all of that is that everything is energy. Your body is energy. Your thoughts are energy. Your emotions are energy. And all of this energy creates a physical, tangible outcome, a physical, tangible effect. So what does that mean? Okay, when we look scientifically, like under the electron microscope, and you look at the cells of like your hand or your heart or your brain, you see that these cells, although very seemingly physical, solid, unchanging, and separate, are actually intimately connected, not separate at all. And this part is kind of what can really blow your mind. They're not physical at all. In fact, if you take all of the physical matter in the entire planet and you condense the physicality of it, like the actual physical stuff, most of it is just empty space. So if you condensed all of it, it would fit on like the period on the end of a sentence and the rest of everything filling up everything you see around you is empty space. That's what we see when we really look quantumly, like under an electron microscope, most of it's just empty space. And then there's like these little tiny particles, okay, electrons and photons, neutrons, you know, what make up the atom, but those are mostly just space. It's actually like a wave and not so much like a particle. Why am I sharing this and what does it mean? It means that most of what you see is this, this reality that we think is physical, solid, and separate is actually not physical, it's energetic. So what does that mean? When we try to approach our health from the physical standpoint, oh, let me eat organic food or take these supplements or have a surgery or take a medication, none of that is wrong or bad or any of that. Uh, but when we only try to approach it from the physical standpoint, we miss the core, the root of what's really causing the discrepancy or the illness. And that comes from the level of your energy, your energy body, your energetic structure. So what's happening energetically is there's an electric field and there's a magnetic field. And it was about 80 years ago, probably 85 years ago, we started looking at the electromagnetic field of the body. They put these electrodes on the head and start to look at what is the output from your brain? And when people would have different thoughts and different activity in their brain, it would show a pattern of a different electrical output, a different electromagnetic output. And we can actually feel this not just physically touching the body, but out beyond the physical body. So it kind of sends and emits a signal beyond the physical body. What we have seen is pretty fascinating is that the electromagnetic field of the heart is even more powerful than the electromagnetic field of the brain. So both of these areas of the body put out your electric uh, electromagnetic result. And I'm gonna draw a picture. It isn't a linear thing. It's actually shaped like a torus. So you've got this body. Let's see how we do here. Yes. And you're actually emitting a field beyond your body. So you can detect this. 10 feet beyond the body. And the Institute of Heart Math has been able to detect the electromagnetic field beyond your physical body, way, way out beyond your physical body. And instead of being just a linear transmission, it sort of circles around your body like a torus, T-O-R-U-S. And you can do some investigative studies to look at like, what does that look like? 
It circles all around your body. And it's this field of energy. I know my marker is a little mm -hmm, sketchy. It's a field of energy beyond your body. Now, there are a lot of people who are practicing medicine in a very different way. They'll feel into your electromagnetic body, what's happening in this field, and they will find discrepancies that are linked to what's happening physically um, with your gut, with your immune system, with your uh, maybe pain syndrome or your brain and migraine headaches or, you know, a concussion and a cognitive disorder. They'll find these electromagnetic defects or electromagnetic disturbances that are linked to those physical disturbances. When they clear these electromagnetically, the physical um, disturbance, the physical discrepancy will heal. Sometimes there's an intervention that happens physically along with that supplements, things that can support it physically, but where these were not working before, once the electromagnetic disturbance is corrected, these things will begin to work. There will be healing at the physical level. Okay, the electromagnetic field of the heart has been found to be far more powerful than the electromagnetic field of the brain. So these are two really prominent areas of your body where you are emitting information. And that information has a tangible, measurable effect on what's happening physically, in your physical body and in your physical surroundings, in everyone around you. Everyone and everything around you is responding to this electromagnetic output, this electromagnetic message. Now, one of the most fascinating things I think is that your electromagnetics of your heart have a really powerful effect on what's happening in your brain. And what does this mean? Not only is the heart secreting enzymes and hormones and all kinds of immune factors and all kinds of neurochemicals that affect every cell in your body and determine your health, your ability to heal, but your heart and its electromagnetic signals change everything that's happening in the brain. So your perception, your beliefs, ideas, behaviors, thoughts, um, all of the things that occur to you like, oh, I'm really worried about my kids. It's not going to be okay. Or you have the perspective, oh, wow, well, my kid is going through this challenge and she's going to be even stronger for it. And I'm here to support her and I feel amazing to see her through this growth process, right? Two very different perspectives on the same thing. It has to do with what's happening at the level of the heart. It changes everything that's happening in the brain. And that's why in all of my courses, I've shared, like, sometimes we're asking these questions from the level of the, the mind, and it's like, just get into your heart. You'll begin to understand from a whole new standpoint. So your perspective completely changes. Your neurochemicals, the brain activity, like how your brain is firing, you're going to be in like fight or flight and fear, or you're going to be in total harmony in the same circumstances, depending on what's happening at the level of your heart. So let's think about our emotions. Now the heart is a hundred times electrically more powerful than what's happening in the brain. And it's 5,000 times more powerful, more impactful magnetically than what's happening at the level of your brain. So when you think of the sum total of this like electromagnetic field of your body, the torus field that's affecting you cellularly, much more of it is coming from what's happening emotionally, what's happening in the harmony of your heart than anything that you think or figure out or learn or try or work for, strive for, or like aim to achieve. And that's why so often we try to do affirmations to make changes, but if they aren't coming from the level of the heart, which is gratitude, appreciation, caring, and compassion, those four things have been found to be the most powerful things that allow an affirmation to take root, to become embodied, to become experienced. If we aren't experiencing them at that level, it's just a mental game. I'm healthy and strong, I'm healthy and strong, or I'm wealthy and everything's okay, or I'm safe, I'm fully loved, whatever we're trying to practice our way into. When it comes from the level of the mind, it doesn't have the power to really transform and transmute what's happening electromagnetically. 
our electromagnetic reality. So when we start to realize everything is energy, we've got to remember that our electromagnetic reality is our reality. The physical world is a mirror reflection of our electromagnetic signal. So a lot of times people learn about law of attraction and they're like, oh, I'm going to manifest my dream life and they're doing it from the level of the mind. You don't need to manifest, you actually can receive. So when we do this from the level of the heart, it's very, very different because all you need to do is harmonize. Harmonize here and it will create harmony here. <laughs> harmonize here in the heart it will create harmony here in the brain, and it will harmonize what's happening here in this outer electromagnetic field. Very, very powerful. Unthinkably powerful, actually. And that's why, in so much of the work I've shared and what others are, are sharing who are aligned with this, it's very simple. I don't have to go and create this whole grid of, here's what I want to attract and manifest, and oh, I've got to focus on it, and I've got to write it down. Anything I do to harmonize at the level of the heart, com compassion, caring, gratitude, appreciation, and allow this to emanate will have an infinitely more powerful effect on everything I'm experiencing in my reality, especially in my body, especially in what's happening in my physical body. So let me look at some comments here, and thank you guys for being here. I love seeing everyone live. Um, I love being here with you, Dr. Kim. Thank you, Patty. So looking forward to this. Linda, Nicole is here. Erica's here. All right. So I see lots of amazing people recognizing so many great people. So just share with me um, your thoughts on this and also what have been your experiences of challenge that you would like to begin to harmonize. Thank you. So how do we begin to harmonize what's happening? And it is so much easier. And what I've shared in the Instant Elevation program, and you can find that at drkimd.com, um, that program was all about this coherence, establishing coherence. It's like get out of your own way. It doesn't need to be so challenging. I get questions really often in the mind-body community. Okay, so I get this and I get that and I understand this, but then... What's the glitch for me is blah, 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 blah. And this is when we're trying to understand and come at it from the mind. And always and again, I have um, invited people like, okay, so bring your awareness into your heart. Breathe into your heart. What this does is it turns off the thinking mind. It turns off the programs, the belief systems, the all these preconceived notions and ideas that are the glitch. And it allows you to come into something deeper. The only thing your mind can do is come up with a better problem. It is not the source of an actual solution. Just like Einstein has said, you can't find a solution at the level of consciousness where the problem lies. How do we come into a higher consciousness? You come into the heart. So coherence is this alignment between your brain and your heart and everything in your body. And we feel it when we're in love, which is why I want to share this in Valentine's Day. We share this when we're in appreciation. We share, we connect with this when we're in um, compassion. But one of the things that happens is then we think, okay, these are all these higher emotions and these are all the lower emotions. Yes, we do see that when you're in frustration, there is more of an irritability, an irregularity in the physical you know, contraction, the physical signal of the heart. So if we look at an EKG, that is reading the electromagnetic field of the heart. We look at this EKG and we see the signal of what the heart is doing. When someone is in frustration or anger or grief, there is more heart rate variability. There's more of an erratic um, activity of the heart. That affects you hormonally, that affects you physiologically, that affects you chemically, that affects you, you know, emotionally, but there's an immediate physical corresponding response that will initiate inflammation, disruption in your digestion, disruption in your immune functioning. It basically makes you sick. When we come into more fluid emotions, the ones that are easier for us to be um, coherent with 
love, joy. I was just spending time with my little baby this morning. I'm just like eating him up and loving him up. And I'm in like, my heart is so open and it feels amazing. And I just love this beautiful little baby. And it's so amazing. There's so much appreciation. We come into a different state. And when we look at people um, physically, chemically, electromagnetically, we see the electromagnetic field of the heart changes. It's more harmonic. There's less heart rate variability. The heart comes into more of a communion with your breathing pattern. Your brain waves come into coherence. Everything chemically comes into harmony. Okay, the thing I want to share on that is it's not about avoiding pain and finding pleasure. Got to have those positive emotions. Oh my God, I'm in a negative emotion. Now I'm wrecking havoc on my body cellularly. I got to get into a positive emotion. <sighs> Release that idea and simply appreciate the quote-unquote negative state you're in. How do I appreciate a negative state when I don't want to be in that negative state? If I can find compassion for the pain I'm in, the frustration I'm in, the anger I'm feeling, the overwhelm, I will come into coherence. And this isn't something I've heard heart math um, people talk about specifically. It's sort of the next um, understanding in expanding, you know, in our expansion and realizing what's happening in here. I don't need to be in these quote unquote higher emotions so much as I am invited to harmonize with all of my emotions, be willing to feel the anger or allow the anger, allow the frustration, but be at peace with what I'm feeling and the way I can do that. So it's not appreciation. Oh, la la la. Everything's so great. Like how I experienced with Gianni this morning. It was so beautiful. It can also be appreciation of my pain, appreciation of my anger, appreciation of my overwhelm. That will bring me into coherence as well. Very, very important to realize. So for example, <clears throat> yeah. So Emily is saying, what if your heart is full of grief and pain? And I'll share this example because it was a little bit of grief for me. Um, Jennifer is here jumping in to see you live. Heather, you did a video on how to harmonize. Is this how we start to achieve this? Yeah, we're going to do some things on how to harmonize um, right here. So yesterday I was really frustrated, really frustrated. And um, so what's coming up for me is like, you know, we got this dog. And my husband was really excited about this dog. Oh, I've always wanted this dog. I've always wanted this dog. So he had a dog from a breeder. It's a German short-haired pointer. Everything I've learned about German short-haired pointers is, is they're super, super hyper. They need a ton of attention. They need a ton of exercise. And they go, 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 go. And I'm like, the last thing we need is one more person in this house that wants to go, 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 go. My husband is super intense. I'm like fireworks. My mom used to call me Hurricane Kim. And our daughter, you know, I mean, she's just moving with all of this. We do great together. But I'm like, oh, my God, who's going to take care of this dog? Who's going to walk this dog? What's going to, how are we going to do this? Then I found out I'm pregnant. So this is after we already decided to get a dog. And I still went forward with it. And my husband was still on board. He's like, yeah, you know, it'll be great. And I'm like, oh, my God, is it really going to be great? Okay. And it was like, let me get out of my own way, get out of resistance, what is the most fluid choice here? And so I went along with getting the dog. But I've come so many times, you know, now we have the dog, into this contraction of like WTF. What was I thinking? Why didn't I resist? Why didn't I stand up for myself? Why didn't I say no when I still had the chance? What the hell was I thinking? And I'm so frustrated and angry. We have this dog. Now, I'm not even being asked to take care of the dog, but there's like a lot of stuff going on with this dog and it's driving me nuts. I keep inviting myself to get into alignment with my choice, which I've intermittently done. But yesterday, it was like, no way. And I was so pissed and so frustrated and I felt awful because I was really resisting who knows what. I don't even know what I was resisting. I just felt this contraction. What did I do that allowed the coherence? So um, I found a way to appreciate what I was feeling. I know that the resistance is not serving me physically, mentally, emotionally, or serving a resolution because the resistance is telling me, just get rid of the dog. You've got to tell your husband. And, you know, I have a husband. I have a partner who is completely willing to consider me 
who is, it's, so it's not like, oh yeah, Kim, you'll be fine. I don't care what you think. I'm getting a dog anyway. No, that's not what's happening. But in my mind, it's like, oh, you've got to have him listen and honor what you need. And, but it felt so resistant. And uh, so I let all that go. And I just began to honor what I felt. I sat down, I breathed, I did this technique, kind of like what we're going to do today. And then my husband came home a few minutes later and I just started crying and crying. He's like, how are you? And I'm like, I'm not really good. And I was able to share with him what I was experiencing, not blaming him. How could you have done this to our family? You weren't thinking of us. You know, all the things my mind was thinking, not um, actually making a conclusion. We should get rid of this dog. If we just get rid of this dog, I'd feel so much better. You know, I didn't go there because I didn't buy into any of that, but just letting him know like, okay, this is what I'm really feeling right now. This is what's coming up for me. So honoring and appreciating what you are feeling will allow the energy to move. And so I start crying and there was this huge release and, you know, he gave me this beautiful hug. He's like, you know, willing to be here for you, whatever's going on for you. And I felt so much better. I didn't have a solution like, okay, we're going to have a talk later or we're going to give this dog away or or anything. Um, but I felt so much lighter and that's where solutions can come in. So it didn't need to be that I wasn't in my grief, anger, fear. I mean, there's so much fear, right? We got this little baby, we have my five-year-old and this dog, right? And she's not a vicious dog, but in my mind, it's like, oh my God, ferocious dog, scary dog. Dogs can do these bad things. And all the replays of being in the emergency room and seeing a kid come in and like sewing up this little beautiful kid's face from like the family dog bit the dog, the kid, you know, and it, it was like scary things like the German, not German trying to her pointer, uh, the golden retriever, right? Like sweetest family dog, wouldn't hurt a fly, bit the kid. Oh my God. One more thing to be afraid of that I never expected. So the replay from all those tapes, but that's not the reality. The reality is we are safe. Uh, the dog is super sweet. And who knows how it could go. So I was able to release the resistance. Doesn't mean you necessarily immediately release the emotion, but you release the resistance. That's when you come into coherence. Then you can be in coherence with your anger, in coherence with your fear, in coherence with your grief. So let's get to it and let's take a few deep breaths. And, and I did feel so much better. I actually laid down on the floor. My little baby was napping and I'm like, okay, I'm doing my yoga what is the best yoga for me right now? I took a nap. I just laid down, relaxed my whole body and let myself go to sleep. And it was like a reboot. Feel so much better today. Okay. So to allow coherence, there's three steps, right? I love three step processes because you can remember them and do them. The first step is, and it's the most important and it's the, the core of the instant elevation program. Um, and it's the core of everything I do to come into the heart. Bring your awareness, bring your attention, bring your presence into the area around your heart. So you can put your hand over your heart, you know, even just like rub around the area in your chest, this like indentation on your chest. You can bring your, um, like visualize this chest area, see your heart moving and breathing. Bring your awareness in your heart. So you can think of it if you close your eyes, if that's available to you. Bring your awareness. Usually it's up in your head. Lots of energy flying around, igniting the electromagnetics of your brain, which is like thoughts, judgments, assumptions, belief systems, basically BS, belief systems, and all of that, which will more powerfully color your electromagnetic field when you put a lot of attention there. And it will less fully color what's happening in your reality, the mirror, when you bring your attention down to your heart. So that is the number one. That is the magic move thing to do. So you can think of taking an elevator down from your head, through your neck, all the way down to your chest and letting it settle into your heart. If you place your hand on this area of your body, over your chest, it will bring your attention to your heart because you're body will bring attention and awareness to wherever you're, you're being touched or stimulating sensation. As a side note, that's one of the very useful things about pain is it anchors your attention in your body in a new way. I had had very uh, severe chronic pain for years and that didn't feel so positive then, but I really realized how much it anchored me in my body. So I would begin to witness the pain 
and send love instead of witnessing the pain and being in fear. That was powerfully healing. I mean, that really healed everything. So you can touch this area over the heart. And now the second space, so you bring your awareness down to your heart. The second part of this exercise is to breathe. Slow and deepen your breathing. And bring your breath into your chest. Bring your breath into your heart. Now it's as if your heart is what's breathing. Your heart is doing the breathing. Your heart is expanding out with the inhale and moving back in with the exhale. Let your heart be what's breathing in and what's breathing out. You could see that with your mind's eye, visualize it, you could feel it, or you could just allow it, just intend it. Okay, good, and you slow and deepen your breathing. And then the third piece is to choose to embrace what is. So you deepen into what you're sensing, you deepen into what you're feeling. What am I feeling right now? What's happening right now? It may be a very superficial awareness. So-and-so is yelling at me, or I'm worried about money, or I have pain in my body, or I can't heal, or, okay. And if you deepen even more fully, you witness something deeper. There's fear. Or, oh, there's so much frustration. Or, oh, this anger. So you can go even more deeply into your experience with the awareness and the breath. But this third piece is I choose to embrace what is. So I'll embrace that fear. I'll embrace that pain. And so you can breathe into the experience of it, inviting it to expand. Now, usually we want the pain go away, go away, and diminish, and I'll do everything I can to make it go away. And we're going to do the opposite. Allow it to expand. Invite it to expand. Witness it more fully. Be curious about it. What is this really? So presencing, breathing, choosing to embrace. And what you will inevitably find is that that pain or anger or fear that you've um, embraced, that you've expanded, that you've allowed, will dissolve. Sometimes it happens immediately. Sometimes it's five breaths. Sometimes it's 10 breaths. Sometimes it's 10 minutes. Sometimes it's 10 days. I, it will not be 10 years. I can tell you that. What makes pain stick around for years is resisting it. What makes abuse in your relationships, lack of love, heartbreak, frustration, stick around for years, repeat itself decade after decade is resisting it. What allows us to move fluidly through it. And, and the more you do this, the more it will move very fluidly, maybe 20 seconds. For me, um, I don't know, maybe it was like 40 seconds yesterday with allowing these really, really contracted space to expand and then allowing all of the energy to release very quickly. So this does, so you can just take a last couple breaths with that and open your eyes when you're ready. This does, science has shown, realign your electromagnetic field, which is so freaking awesome because we have so much amazing technology now. Great, we have um, drugs, medications, surgeries, supplements, all kinds of things to handle things on the physical level. And there are amazing technologies to help release things on the energetic level. Energy healers or chiropractors who practice kinesiology and can feel this torus, can feel the electromagnetic field and assist you in releasing energy. And with a technique like this or to practice like this, you are the source. You're connecting with the source that realigns your electromagnetic field. You're connecting with the source that allows coherence to establish within your body. Very, very powerful. The more you practice this, the more fluid it will be and the more um, directly it will impact you. Okay, I'm going to look through some of these comments now. Um, so like going back Sarah says, Dr. Kim, I feel like I force my affirmations without really feeling them. I can't seem to feel anything. Harmonizing with my heart just doesn't register. My heart is angry and sad. So how does one get there without forcing it? Yeah, this is perfect. And this was before we did the exercise. 
if it doesn't come naturally. So, so this is the best way to go because I have tried for years. It was like to be positive, to feel better. The worst thing we can do when we're trying, when we feel really bad or like that depth of grief and despair, the worst thing we can do is try to feel better. It's like, oh my God, shoot me now. Why? Because I'm resisting what I'm feeling. I don't want to feel bad. I want to feel good. I want to feel better. So then it's the opposite of embracing despair, the opposite of embracing grief. And you know, you know, if you've ever um, like had someone close to you die and then you go through that whole period and people are trying to make you feel better and you're like, yeah, just leave me alone. I don't want to feel better. What happens is it's like, I just want to feel my grief. Can I have 10 minutes to just feel my grief? When there's the, you know, a funeral and a wake and all of these ceremonial things, that gives us, it's to give us the space to feel our grief. It's, it's like, oh, it's, it's right to feel this grief. And I'm going to wear black and celebrate my grief. And I'm going to let tears flow in public and celebrate my grief. And sometimes it doesn't last long enough. It's like, okay, back to work. Okay, back to your game. Let's do your thing. I'm better now. Oh, yeah, I'm just going to be positive. I feel so much better. Oh, he's in a better place now. And then we put ice cream on top of poop. No, you got to let that poop <laughs> move. Be in your grief as long as your grief wants to be met, as long as your grief is there. Celebrate your grief. It's resisting it that causes the problem. Okay, let me go So for more of these. It's a little hard to scroll. I've been there. Still am. Doberman puppy. Oh, God bless you. <laughs> I know that this dog came into my life for a reason, and there's a little resistance to receiving that, but I'll keep you posted on how it goes. Um, Paula, I don't seem to connect to my heart. When I'm silent and my mind is silent, I don't feel anything. This is awesome. This happens very, very frequently on the front end when people join a program with me, and they're like, I don't know what I feel. I don't feel anything. Um, she's saying... Uh, if something comes up, I allow it and breathe. It does feel calmer, which is a blessing, but oddly empty, not expansive, not harmonious. Do you think I'm on the right track or has my heart shut down? Listening, love listening to you. Yes. Um, it's kind of both. You are on the right track and your heart was shut down. It was shut down for such a long time that maybe 10 minutes of this practice or like 10 days, it, it's, it's still kind of like opening up from that little cocoon of protection. So give it time. You are already allowing harmony, even if you don't feel it. It's like if you have a kid, um, and this is like inner child work, where you got this this kid, and the kid's like, oh my God, you're not safe. I'm going to go hide in the closet and shut the door. And you're like, come on, unlock the door. Get out of there. And you're banging, banging, banging. Come on, this is ridiculous. And the kid's like, no freaking way. I'm, I'm out of here. You're not safe. And so no matter how hard you bang on that door, um, that's not what the kid will respond to. And then you just finally begin like, okay, I'm here, whatever you need. I will sit here and be in harmony and whenever you come out is fine and I love you unconditionally and whatever you need, I'm here to allow. And that's where you are with the kid. Now, the kid is listening and it's like this emptiness, nothing, nothing, nothing. There's a stillness there, and it's like, how long are you going to hold that space? Is it real? Are you really going to stay in this willingness for me, or is you know, are you going to come back and say, what's taking you so long? I was so calm and harmonious, and you didn't come out. Like That's what happens with the heart. That's what happens with the, the inner tenderness. It's like it's been beat down. One of the really powerful practices I've shared is Ho'oponopono, and I shared a really amazing meditation um, it's in the Embracing Health program, too, that we go through a lot of this. That's the live work that I do when we work with a group, um, where we bring you through this integration of the unconditional love, pure love, for that part of you that's been shut down. It is the most powerful thing, because it's like that parent outside the door is like, I am here for you as long as it takes, do whatever you need, and then there's no need for the child to come out. So when I do it in a way of like, I'm here for you. Why the hell aren't you coming out? That's what happens a lot. People are like, I'm doing FT. Why isn't it working? Or I'm doing the harmonization. What the hell is wrong with me? Am I doing it wrong? Why isn't it getting the result? That's like trying to badger that kid or manipulate the kid to come out of the closet and open into love. It's like saying, come on, I've been patient. What the hell is wrong with you? And now I'm being impatient. 
It's an unconditional willingness. It's an unconditional presence. So stay present. Yes, you are on the right track. Beautiful question, Paula. Peter says, how do we hold the tension between the, I want my life to change and I want things to get better versus accepting where we are right now and coming into love of the present. I love this question because this is the difference between this space of harmonization, I choose harmonization, versus I want the result, I want the result. Now, the result, quote unquote, will be the reflection of the harmony in your electromagnetic field. I create this harmony, I receive all things in grace and ease. Then money starts to flow in effortlessly, or an awesome job that I just love, the opportunity shows up. But if I'm focusing on, oh, I want that opportunity, I want that opportunity, or I need more money, I need more money, it's not the same thing. So there really isn't the need to focus on this thing I want so much as there is the need to focus on the harmonization. Come into alignment with that harmony that establishes coherence at this really, really profound core level that then, yes, 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 will be reflected in your outer circumstances. So when we think they're separate, that's when we try to figure out, how do I go about it? Should I focus this much over here and this much over here? And then it's like, oh, now I'm going to work on my health. Or now I'm going to work on my relationship. They aren't separate. They are all a reflection of this coherent state, of this completely self-embraced place. So Peter, um, uh, where are you? Yes, uh, that is, so there doesn't need to be the tension between I want my life to change and I embrace what is right now. There doesn't need to be tension between those. That's where the discrepancy comes when you think those are separate. When I come into this stillness and presence of I honor all that I am, I honor what I'm experiencing right now. That is what allows the transmutation. So connect in the heart, breathe, allow it to express itself fully, and then embrace all that arises. The only moment we have is the now. So there really is nothing else to do. Okay. Um, can a person get to the point where they feel that heart, heart harmony continuously? Yes. <laughs> I love that the answer is yes, because don't we kind of like want to know there's an end to suffering? When I met Sylvia Olivier, who's been my mentor, um, you know, worked with her for a couple of years and had the most extraordinary, extraordinary, um, expansion of my life. Um, and her work is golden heart wisdom. She is someone who holds no resistance. So like I shared yesterday, um, I went into this resistance state and then I'm like, okay, wait, let me allow this energy to move. I will have um, intermittent periods of resistance. Like I said, it was like 40 seconds yesterday. It used to be, I don't know, days, like it was a lot and it would take, I don't know how long to release, like really, really not fun. Uh, but now... It can come in. It's still, but it doesn't. I don't, I don't really mind so much that I am not in a perfect, never-ending state of neutrality. I love knowing Sylvie because I know it exists, and there are other people who speak and share from neutrality. Um, so myself, I have been more in this space of neutrality, like almost all of the time, right, in the last couple of years. Before that, I'd bump in and out, bump in and out. I knew it was there and I could teach about it, but it was like I wasn't embodying it unconditionally. I could still get um, taken by my fears. And um, that isn't what happens anymore. I don't buy into it. I'm awakening more and more through that experience of contraction. Yes, it is. Um, we do move more and more into that expansion. That's kind of the whole point is that we um, emerge into a life in neutrality, in that state of total harmony. Um, neutrality isn't contentment. It's not uh, metza metza because I know we can use that word and think it means no, not good, not too bad. And some people that teach that emotional scale, it's like this idea, you go up and down the emotional scale. I feel really good and love and harmony. I, now I feel really despair and frustration and I got to climb the emotional scale. That you can let go. It's like a never ending game. What is really what creates the harmony is embracing all of it. And then we transcend the emotional scale. I embrace all things in ease, joy, and glory. 
and we can be in harmony with all of it. Okay, I'm going to see if there are any more comments here because we're going to complete. I'm at drkimd.com for those of you who would like more. Certainly subscribe if you are ready for more and to begin to really embrace living in the harmony of neutrality all the time or as much as possible for you in this very moment, I'd invite you into the Embracing Health group. It's drkimd.com forward slash health. That's where I'll be working with a group live. We had an amazing, amazing experience with the last group that has just finished. So that is a very exciting thing for me to be starting up. If you'd like an online home study program, the Instant Elevation, where you go even more fully into this connection within ourselves. And that is um, a much lower investment. It's drkimd.com forward slash IEP, Instant Elevation Program. I will be looking through these comments for those of you who post when you are listening to the recording and very much appreciate the comments. Oh, Randy has said, how can what you're sharing here specifically assist with navigating the dating world? Oh, I'm so glad you brought this up. Drawing in amazing relationships and knowing what to look for and what to say yes to. A is that, and I love Randy when you ask questions. Point one is I've got to let go of trying to pull it in because magnetize or attracting it can get a little bit contracted where I'm like trying to work at it. And instead, as I embrace what is and allow harmony, I invite in everything that's a match for that. An invitation is a little bit of a different frequency or harmonic from pulling it in or magnetizing it where it's like, I got to go out and get it. Or am I good enough? I'm not doing good enough. I'm not magnetizing enough. I've got to be better. I've got to do it better. So the harmony that we're instilling here goes beyond doing something well or not doing it so well. It is who you are. It is your natural state. So when you, Randy, enter into the space of, I am unconditionally loved and accepted exactly as I am. What comes up? For me, before I had harmonious relationships to the degree that I have now, what came up was, oh God, that's so not true. I'm so broken. Oh God, that's so not true. I'm really selfish. Oh God, that's so not true. I'm really, really, really good person. I once had a boyfriend that, because I was so interested in my own like introspective and personal work and development and whatever and so aware of anger I still carried at my dad or whatever I still carried he um and I was dating this guy he was like well, you got a lot of baggage <laughs> and if it had been like a year prior I would have felt so broken and brokenhearted and so like oh god I got so much but he's right I'm so such a mess but at the time I was like huh it's interesting that he has that point of view because Everyone, all the women he's dated <clears throat> have had quote unquote baggage, but none of them have been as aware of it as I am or as willing to move through it as I am. And I knew that that BS about me being broken or whatever wasn't true. And so I broke up with him shortly thereafter <laughs> because there were a lot of things in the relationship where we weren't aligned. So Randy, what comes up for you? when you begin to embody that level of pure love for yourself, level of unconditional love. I had, um, you know, I was married in the past, and I remember one of the things he would say is, well, you just want to be treated like a princess. And because I believed I didn't deserve to be, like it was wrong, like, oh, I'm, I don't want to be a prima donna, I got to work hard. I don't want to be a prima donna, I kind of should be abused. It was like I received and accepted a lot of um, being treated not, not, in a really harmonic way, let's just say. And when I finally begin to reside in, yeah, I want to be treated like a princess and I'm willing to treat myself like a princess and honor myself and adore myself and cherish myself. That's when that relationship was no longer aligned and it just like, it ended. And I moved into a much higher harmonic of self-love, like immediately. Well, actually I moved in the harmonic of self-love before the relationship um, dissolved, but because of that, it dissolved very fluidly for me. So how is that for you when you begin to embrace that? Because for me, it was like I bought into it, that it was wrong. I was asking too much. 
I really shouldn't have it all. Same thing with money. Um, I receive all things in grace and ease. So the universe is abundant and adores me and is always generous with me. I need to be generous with myself. Being generous with myself means I take a nap when I need a nap. I don't push myself when it feels discordant to push myself. Even if the mind says, well, you have to do that because you won't make money. You have to do that because this won't come together. It's like I honor myself first and foremost, and I'm generous with myself unconditionally, and then I can allow the world to be a reflection of that. And then I always receive what I need when I need it because I choose to be loving and generous with myself. I didn't used to choose that. I used to work really hard, push myself really hard, and life was a reflection of that. All right, Erica, beautiful Erica. When turning into my heart, it brought up a huge amount of overwhelm and anxiety. I've been a master of resistance. <laughs> so it's my body's first response to situations that are difficult. It's clear this overwhelm is tied to the situation we've discussed in the past few days. I had spoken to Erica personally. Yeah, it's beautiful. So let the overwhelm, it brought up a huge amount of overwhelm and anxiety when you're present. And then we can make that a wrongness. Like, this is what I'm supposed to feel. Yeah, this is exactly what you're supposed to feel. This, what you feel is what you're supposed to feel. And so can I allow it? Can I willingly move through it? And that's what allows it to release. Beautiful. How do we make sure we're moving through the pain and not resting there? That's a good question that comes from the mind. And the mind is trying to make it complicated. Oh, wait, wait. Maybe you're just resting. And you should really be moving through. Are you doing the work? And so when you feel into the quality of where am I asking this question from? That will answer itself. Is it a harmonic of pure love or is it a harmonic of um, limitation, lack, fear, right? Because the fear is, oh, wait a minute, maybe I'm just resting. Maybe I'm giving myself too much rest and I should be doing the work. So you can feel if that's where you're at. That's the resonance of fear. And fear is always false evidence appearing real. Dump it. Okay. Jennifer says, I finally made it to a live video. Woohoo! <laughs> Blessings to you, Dr. Kim. I'm on week two of six of the Mind Your Body program and sure am thankful for it. Loving the old belief, new belief, and pivoting. So there are tools in my book, the Mind Body Toolkit, that she's referring to. And in one of the programs um, online at drkimd.com, you can go through this six-week integration and it helps you integrate those tools more fully. And a lot of people have a lot of fun with that. Um, so I'm glad that you like that. There's like exercises in there you can play with. Um, you don't want to work at this. If it ever enters the energy of like, oh, I gotta do the work or, oh God, I didn't watch the video. Just be aware of that. That's not what you need to be doing at all. All right. I'm so excited to celebrate Valentine's day this way. And I will be sharing this video. We email these out. Um, so if you're not subscribed at drkimd.com, Go ahead and subscribe if that speaks to you. And I look forward to further questions. Uh, for those of you who would like to go deeper with this work, I'm very happy to receive you in um, any of the programs that we're offering, the, the home study programs or the live programs where we work together. So feel out what's a fit for you. Um, and you reach out if there are any questions. Give yourself as much love as is humanly possible or even divinely possible today. Give yourself all the love in the world. I told my little Gianni this morning, your mama has so much love for you. You can have all the love in the world. And I know his little baby self can feel that harmonic of my love for him and my willingness to be there for him and my adoration of him and appreciation of him. And that harmonic feeds your baby. It literally feeds like energetically. They can feel that. That harmonic feeds your body. So, oh, I did put this in my notes. You can ask yourself these two questions today. Did I feed myself today, feed my heart, feed my body with pure love? Did I feed the world today? One of the things we didn't get into is how this harmonic, how this, um, this alignment within yourself emanates beyond you to the people around you. It allows them to come into a more inspired state. It not only affects your brain and allows your brain to dump your old belief systems, dump your old anger, hatred, fear, resentment, the resistance that you've held. It allows those around you to do the same. So when someone else comes into this energy field, you know, you've got this torus of electromagnetic energy of harmony, of pure love around your body. 
it invites them into this higher state as well. So a lot of times people are like, oh, my kid really needs this work. Oh, God, can you teach my husband? My husband really needs you. The only one in your world who can emanate this or integrate this is you. The only one in my world who can integrate this is me. So sharing it is really powerful for me. But the most important thing is that I'm integrating this for myself. That lights up your world. It actually has been shown, and the Institute for Heart Math has satellites, like 14 of them, in different spaces over the globe to look at the electromagnetic frequency of the planet and how that changes with um, discordant things like um, the incident in 9-11 and how that can um, harmonize with incidents like, uh, some of you may have heard of um, global they're like global coherence projects where they'll do meditative practices with very, very, very large amounts of people or have like Tibetan monks pray in certain areas and they'll see that the electromagnetic frequency will change in that area. Um, the electromagnetics changed globally with um, major catastrophic events like 9-11 or other things that have happened on the planet and they will harmonize notably and measurably when they do these... Um, group, large, large, large group meditations. Joe um, Dispenza did one, I think it's like a year ago, where they just had, you know, hundreds of thousands of people at the same time coming into coherence. And it does shift the alignment of what's happening on the planet. That is incredible because the frequency of the planet affects every single individual human. The planet herself has her own harmonic and her own electromagnetic field, of course. But that affects very powerfully what's happening in your physiology. It's one of the reasons there's so many people who are having this like catastrophic breakdown in their awakening process right now. We are going through a massive awakening. It can be really disruptive if you don't have guidance or an awareness of what's happening because you start feeling all your shit and you think you're going freaking crazy and the world is falling apart. And so having guidance like the um, Embracing Health program is designed that way. And there are other people doing amazing work like this as well to assist you through that ascension, through that awakening as fluidly as possible. And I know it's helped me immensely to have someone like Sylvie who has assisted me. And I know it's helped a lot of people, um, the work that we've been doing here to begin to integrate that for their own um, alignment and their own ascension. So I'm super excited to be sharing that with you. So those are the two questions is, have I, have I fed my heart today? Have I fed my body today? And did I feed the world today? You don't need to go out and raise a billion dollars to end world hunger. <sighs> the most important thing you can do is nurture yourself. And that does have a very, very powerful effect on the harmonic of the planet that feeds every human heart. Sharing so much love with you. I'm Dr. Kim Duramo from drkimd.com. I look forward to connecting with you further, and I'll see you each week. I'll be here for Mind Body TV Live at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern, and I will see you soon. Bye.